Coming up, I've got week three National Football League picks and predictions. <laughs> you, you don't want to miss them. Highly coveted, I must say. We've got that plus uh, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch both signed extensions earlier in the day. But no word yet on how long <laughs> the extensions actually are. It's just bizarre stuff. Coming out of the 3-0 San Francisco 49ers, we've got that plus the Diglis uh, Dallas Cowboy defense, just uh, super sad stuff there. We've got all of that, and of course, trust me, as always, a whole lot more coming up on the House of Takes pod today. All right, I'm Dave Dubois, and if you haven't had a chance yet to <laughs> subscribe to the show, please go ahead and subscribe. And of course, like this video and or audio version of the House of Takes pod. Okay, so getting a couple things um, uh, cleared up here. Normally, I do uh, picks with Brad Hoysef on our Gods of Odds podcast, uh, which is predominantly really a vlog on, on YouTube. Uh, but Brad, um, uh, out of the state of California as we speak, uh, dealing with um, uh, some things on the family side. Everything's okay, but just uh, wasn't able to uh, get uh, the picks in this week the way we normally do. So I decided to, at the very least, give you my picks on the House of Takes pod, uh, which I do a couple times a week, as you all know. Now, we are going to get into those picks here in just a little bit, and I'll rifle through them. I, I won't, you know... Uh, prolong them too long, but I thought it was really interesting. And I should say that I'm recording this uh, Friday afternoon, uh, started recording at 4.30 p.m. Uh, West Coast time. And um, so it's the, you know, basically uh, the day after the San Francisco 49ers who play really in San Jose slash Santa Clara are 3-0 and after taking down the New York football giants. Um, and there was no surprise there at all. What was a little bit surprising earlier in the day, there was an announcement that came out that John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have both um, signed extensions to their contracts. Now, um, uh, Lynch was signed through 2025. Shanahan was signed through 2024 uh, prior to uh, this particular agreement. What's really bizarre about it and this is like old school York stuff. This is <laughs> this is like when the Yorks decided to bring in um, Chip Kelly uh, and uh, uh, and then Tom Sula at some point was a head coach. You know, all of the coaches post Jim Harbaugh were a complete disaster until John Lynch uh, showed up, uh, got rid of Nick uh, Bulky and uh, um, and then Kyle Shanahan. And it's been fairly smooth sailing. Uh, though you could sort of uh, say that the 49ers have actually sort of underperformed based on the amount of talent that this team has had. They've certainly had some bad luck. I mean, the Brock Purdy injury was so random in the uh, NFC Championship game last year. So anyways, this is a extension was signed, but there was no actual uh, uh, length of time for either John or Kyle. And it's really bizarre for that to happen. It's bizarre that there would be a release. Uh, and it's even more bizarre that they wouldn't release during that release exactly how long it is. All they said is it's long term. So you know it's going to come out at some point, probably within the next 24 hours. Why not just put it out right away, York family? I'm just saying. All right, uh, let's get into the uh, picks for the week. Now, normally on the Gods of Odds podcast, we do the top 10 games worth actually spending some money on. I'm actually just going to go through all of the games here and tell you um, who I think is going to win against the spread. The Browns at home with Kareem Hunt just re-signing. And of course, you all know he knows the offense really well to begin with. Our three and a half point favorites against Ryan Tannehill. And I guess I just want to ask you this. Do you really think Ryan Tannehill is going to have two decent games in a row together? And I think the answer to that question is emphatically no. 
Will the um, Cleveland Browns defense show up? Yes. Uh, do I really believe in the second coming of Deshaun Watson? No. Do I like Ford, their young running back? Yes. Do I think uh, Amari Cooper will be more involved in the offense this week than he was last week? Yes. Um, do I think the Cleveland Brown defensive line is going to apply so much pressure to Ryan Tannehill that by the end of the game, Ryan Tannehill is going to wish he was a wide receiver once again? So I think the Cleveland Browns, <laughs> it's safe to say, are going to win this game, and I'll go ahead and give up the points. Um, Detroit at home against the Atlanta Falcons. Um, the Lions are favored by three. Um, not sure yet if Amon uh, Ron St. Brown is going to be able to play. That has fantasy football implications for a lot of you out there, including myself. Uh, that being said, um, I do believe that this Detroit Lions team will get back uh, on the winning side of the fence. Um, uh, their defense is going to have to, you know, figure out how to how to shut down um, uh, the Atlanta Falcons offense. Uh, that that is a phrase I thought I would be saying at all this year four months ago, uh, but with some fantastic draft picks um, and a ball control style offense. Um, this Atlanta Falcon team is, quite frankly, really dangerous. I think the game's going to be close, but I'll go ahead and give up the points and take the Lions in it nonetheless. The Saints are going to Packer land to do battle with Jordan uh, uh, Jordan Love. I don't know if you saw this earlier in the day, <clears throat> but it's a whole new Aaron Rodgers. I mean, we knew it was a whole new Aaron Rodgers when he uh, on hard knocks. But, I mean, even with the injury and everything, Aaron Rodgers publicly shedding some love for Jordan Love a little earlier in the day. I won't get into all the specifics other than to say Aaron Rodgers said some positive things about Jordan Love, which is something that I don't think we would have seen from Aaron Rodgers two or three years ago for a variety of reasons, as you might imagine. <laughs> Anyways, Packers favored by one and a half in this game. Um, I, I I like this Packers team a lot more than I thought I was going to like it. I like this uh, Saints defense. I said about four months ago, I thought they'd be a top five defense in the National Football League this particular season. And so far through the first two weeks, they've proven me right. But we're only two weeks in. And I just... You know, I struggle with uh, with uh, Derek Carr, and I don't want to because I, I think he's one of those guys that has enough arm strength and has enough uh, understanding of how defensive defenses work uh, to actually perform at a fairly high level. But maybe the Raiders knew something we didn't. I'm going to go with the Packers in this particular game, it will be close, but the Packers will win by more than a point and a half. On to the uh, Dolphins at home against <laughs> Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. Like I've said this for uh, a couple years now. I'm about 24 months in on saying that I didn't think the Bronco defense was as good as everybody else thought it was. Um, I, I, I love the Dolphins in this particular game. I'll go ahead and give up the six and a half. My Vikings at home against one of my other all-time favorite teams, the Los Angeles Chargers. And I um uh this is basically a pick'em game. Uh as of right now, the Vikes are favored by a point. When you look at it, this is a you know, obviously a must-win for both teams. I mean, every game for the most part during the first 15 weeks of the season is a must-win for those teams, right? But for the Chargers, who are on the verge of head coach implosion, I think I'm going to go ahead and lean with the Vikings to find a way to actually right the ship of their turnovers. The Vikings could easily be 2-0 and right now. And I can't really say that um, about the Los Angeles Chargers. I'll take the Vikings and give up a whole point. Uh, to do that. Um, the Jets are at home um, and uh, uh, they are, uh, the Patriots are, are, are favored by two and a half. Um, 
look, uh, I, I, I know the Jets haven't beat the Patriots in, in like 10 games. I don't think it's going to happen this time either. I, I'm just that down on Zach Wilson. I, I knew there were, you knew he was going to have issues against the Cowboys, right? I mean, that wasn't a surprise for anybody, was it? Certainly wasn't a surprise for me. So to see Zach Wilson, um, uh, he didn't really implode, but sort of implode against the Cowboys. You know, Bill Belichick is going to know how to do deal with Zach Wilson right away anyways. And as far as I know, they haven't picked up another quarterback in the last 12 minutes who's going to be able to jump in and rescue the Jets this week at home. I'll give up the points and take the Patriots. Commanders at home against the Bills. Uh, Bills favored by six and a half. Um, we know that um, uh, Sam Thurston Howell the third is, is, is playing well enough to win probably half of the games he starts as a quarterback. We know Josh Allen plays really well against everybody but the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I like the Bills in this game to win. The six and a half feels like a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and put it down nonetheless. Jaguars at home against the Texans. Jags are favored by eight and a half points in this game. Um, if the Carolina Panthers had it to do over again right now, two weeks into the season, do you think they would pick C.J. Stroud? I'm just asking. Do you, do you think they would uh, pass on what they know now today about Bryce Young and go with C.J. Stroud? I mean, C.J. Stroud seems to be at the point already just two weeks into his National Football League career on a bad team, by the way, where he's actually slowed things down to the point where C.J. Stroud, he's going to make mistakes, no doubt about that, but he's doing a good job reading the defenses. He's doing a good job actually keeping his head up. <laughs> I mean, he just is. Eyes downfield, CJ. I'm just saying. So I, I, I think that they would, um, uh, they would go with CJ if they had a chance. I mean, they would want to admit that they made a mistake. It's too early to tell. I don't want to bash Bryce Young, but it's just something to think about. Anyways, in this particular game, I like the Jags to win, but I'm not giving up the eight and a half. Ravens are missing seven players. They have, that's right, seven players. It's like 30% of their starting roster uh, between the offense and the defensive side are out. Um, the Colts are, are not going to have their young quarterback, Anthony Richards. He's under uh, percussion uh, uh, protocol, so uh, concussion protocol, I should say and he will not be in the game at all. Um, <clears throat> the um, Ravens are also favored by eight and a half in this one. I'll go ahead and take the Ravens in this. Get ready for a heavy dose of Gus Edwards. Uh, Seattle at home against the Carolina Panthers. Uh, look, uh, you know, that first week where the Seahawks basically sputtered is not going to happen in this game. They're going to take down the Carolina Panthers by more than five and a half at home. Uh, the mass destruction of the Chicago Bears will continue as they go into Arrowhead to do battle with the Kansas City Chiefs, who are favored by 12 and a half points. No doubt that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs offense is uh, struggling a little bit. Uh, there's, there's no doubt that they're missing. Uh, a couple key wide receivers that they had last year that they don't have this year. And the players that are supposed to be taking those positions haven't really stepped up yet. It's not to say that it won't happen at some point during the season. And it's certainly not to say that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to find a way to lose at home and find a way to actually even make the game interesting. And I, look, the, the, the only way the Chicago Bears win this game and or even stay close in this game if they just go ahead and completely unleash their quarterback, which basically means uh, allow him uh, to run a lot more than he's actually passing. So they gave him basically five opportunities to run last week. They need to give him 20 opportunities to run if they're going to have any chance at winning this game. Now, I went back and I looked at Justin Fields' tape. 
And I, I, it is, it, you know, he's been in the league now for too long to not be reading defenses correctly and to be missing people as wide open consistently as he is. It's not just once, it's not just twice. It's consistent misreading of defenses. Uh, at this point, um, uh, you know, there's definitely something not right there uh, with the offensive strategy combined with the skill set that Justin Fields actually has. I would run him at least 20 times this week. I, if they don't do that, they don't stand a chance. I'm still going to give up the 12 and a half and take the Chiefs. Cowboys it going to Arizona to do battle. Uh, Cowboys favored by. Uh, 12 and a half in this one. Look, I like the Cowboys uh, to win the game. I think the uh, Diggs um, injury, just just terrible. I mean, you, you, like, you hate to see these kinds of injuries happen in practice. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, you hate to see these kinds of injuries happen um, in the regular season. And the other thing on this is, is, you know, with all of the modern technology that we're building, I mean, for God's sakes, if you open up an e-commerce store, you might someday have the opportunity to send people in space. <laughs> I'm just saying, Jeff Bezos, why can't we figure out how to deal with MCLs and ACLs, figure out how to get those things repaired faster? Why can't we figure out how to prevent those injuries from happening in the first place? Like, I know there's a lot of medical research out there, but um, it baffles me that this continue. I mean, you just hate to see it because, you know, if you're like me and you're a pure National Football League fan, regardless of any team, you want to see great football. Yeah, I wanted to see this Dallas Cowboy team with this defense entirely intact throughout the entire season to have something like this happen during practice. <laughs> as Alan Iverson would say, is just baffling. Anyways, um, the Cardinals are, uh, you know, played a little bit better. Um, uh, Josh Dobbs is is not a total slouch, um, uh, but I like the Dallas Cowboys to cover on the road um, in this particular game. All right, so then we move to um, uh, a... Uh, uh, Raiders at the, um, so this is the Sunday night football game that NBC has in store for us, um, which is, I know you're super excited. The Las Vegas Raiders at home, um, against the, uh, um, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, Steelers one-on-one Raiders one-on-one. Uh, I thought the Raiders were completely foolish and idiotic when they went ahead and traded Waller. I just hated that move for a wide variety of reasons. Um, and I think, you know, Josh McDaniels, you know, is, is I always want this guy to succeed, but I mean, he seems to continually shoot himself in the foot. Um, I expect the, the Raiders to play better in this game. That Pittsburgh Steelers defense is improving. Um, uh, the Raiders are actually favored by two and a half in this game. Uh, this is a game that I could see, you know, Mike Tomlin figuring out how to win. Uh, but I'm a little worried about it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Raiders and give up the two and a half, um, uh, two Monday night football games. And I don't know about you, but I am, I just, you know, I don't know that I'm a big fan of the two Monday night football games. Maybe it's because they're not staggered far enough apart from each other. Maybe if it was like a 415 start and then we went old school and we went to like a 6 p.m. start the way it used to be in the National Football League, then maybe I'd, I'd feel a little bit better about it. Um, but in the first game, you've got the Eagles at the Buccaneers. Both teams are 2-0. and The Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield have been playing a lot better, as you know, uh, a lot better than most people thought they would play. Um, uh, Baker's going to be going up a week. That's right, a weak Philadelphia Eagles secondary. Uh, though the uh, front line and the linebackers are, you know, state of the art, if you will. Um, so uh, it should be an interesting game. Eagles, uh, I think, are going to win this game. They're favored by four and a half. I think Tampa's going to keep it close. I'm going to take the Eagles 
um, to win, but I'm going to take the uh, cover on this for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rams at the uh, um, I should I should give Sean McVay his justice. The one and one <laughs> Los Angeles Rams are at the zero and two um, uh, uh, Bengals, uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Um, the Bengals picked up a third string quarterback earlier in the day and one Jared Stinson. And I'm sure that should tell you everything you need to know about Burroughs calf injury. Um, uh, Bengals, uh, at this point, despite all of that are still favored by two and a half. Um, this is a game that the Rams can actually steal. Uh, they went ahead and they trade cam acres earlier in the week. Uh, to my Minnesota Vikings, which I just thought was an absolutely terrible deal for the Vikes. I just, I don't believe in Cam Akers at all. I would have rather the Vikings gone out and got Kareem Hunt um, when he was available uh, than bring in Cam Akers. And and for those of you who are going to be like, well, Cam is such a younger running back. Yeah, well, even though Kareem's been in the league three or four times as long as Cam has, Kareem is a way better running back. Um, than Cam Akers ever will be. Anyways, um, uh, so I, I actually, um, I think, you know, this is going to be a back and forth game. I'm not sure who's going to end up playing quarterback for the Bengals. Um, uh, so uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and take the Rams and I'll I'll take the two and a half uh, that I'm getting from the Bengals in this particular game. All right. That is it for my uh, week three National Football League picks. Um, uh, Once again, uh, normally we do this on the Gods of Odds podcast. Normally, uh, that is top 10 games worth actually spending some money on. So I'll let you figure out which of these games are actually worth uh, spending some money on uh, this week. I would say... The one game I would certainly spend some money on and feel really confident about it. There's two games. Ravens at home against the Colts and Seahawks uh, at home against the Panthers. All right, North America. Uh, That is it for today's uh, House of Takes pod. Once again, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, please go ahead and subscribe. And of course, like this video for the House of Takes pod. I'm Dave DeBaugh, wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing day.